Hey, what's up? My name's Cameron Doherty, here with another tech video. And what I have with me here today is the LG NeoBlade 3, a monitor that originally was released in 2016. Now at six years old in 2022, I'm gonna talk about why I still think it can hold its own as a work from home monitor for your setup. Now, starting with the front, you can see it's a 24 inch panel. So it's not the biggest, but it's certainly gonna be better than whatever you've got on your laptop. In addition to that, it's an IPS display and it has quite thin bezels. And I think most notably, there's no chin on the bottom as there is on basically every other monitor you're going to find. So what that means is that you have a slightly more immersive experience when you're using it. And it also just takes up less space in general on your desk. Now, my biggest complaint with the overall appearance here is with this stand. And so this is a very basic stand. It's a nice looking actually brushed silver appearance, uh, but the quality of it is lacking. So there's a lot of wobble. It is not very stable. And also the movement is limited. Now there's, there's some tilt this direction, uh, but otherwise there is no pivot. There is no height adjustability. There's no anything like that. So if there was one thing from just an everyday functionality perspective that I would change, it would certainly be the stand. Looking at it from the side, you can see that in addition to it being a thin monitor in terms of the bezels around the side, it's also just thin front to back. And that means that it's not gonna take up a lot of space on your desk and it's something that will allow you to just have it be non-invasive and not something that's gonna get in the way. Looking at the back of the display, you can see that it's actually a really nice white color. So if that's something that's important to you, it looks nice. And if it's gonna sit up against a wall, then it doesn't quite matter what the back looks like. Now, in terms of functionality on the back, you can see at the top, we have the four holes here for VESA mounting functionality. And this means that you can connect it to a myriad of third-party stands and monitor arms. And given the instability of the pre-installed mount, uh, I think I would definitely opt for Avesa if it's possible. For an IO perspective, we have the power, audio in and out, as well as VGA and two HDMIs. So the one thing that's really missing here is a DisplayPort option. However, if you're using a basic work from home functionality, you're probably connected with HDMI anyway, as this is far and away the most popular for somebody that's just in a working setting. The last thing to call out here is cable management. And I always will say that some cable management is better than none. And in this case, there is a small clip that attaches to the bottom of the stand here that allows you to capture your cables and prevent them from going all over the place. Finally, moving to the bottom of the display, you can see that there is a uh, very simple control here, commonly referred to as a nipple control because, well, I think you can guess that. And we have some included speakers that are honestly not that bad. So for the overall package, a $200 monitor like this is exactly what somebody needs for their basic work from home setup. Now, if you're doing complex video editing or anything that requires advanced functionalities, you probably already know the type of monitor that you need and you know that this isn't for you. But if you're just doing everyday tasks, if you're doing anything web-based, if you're doing emails, if you're doing basic word processing or spreadsheets or PowerPoint, any of those things will be absolutely fine on a display like this. And at $200 for this nice form factor, uh, you can't really beat it. And even at six years old, I still recommend it. You can see that the thin bezels around the outside and the lack of the chin really do show through when we actually turn the display on. And the overall display quality is pretty decent. You can see the response is perfectly fine. It's 60 Hertz. You're not gonna get anything milky smooth like you would out of a high refresh rate monitor. But once again, this is something that most people won't even notice as lesser than. And in terms of included onboard audio, it's really not half bad. This will be only playing at about 40% and it really is pretty solid. Hey, what's up YouTube? My name is Cameron Doherty here with another tech video. I've been using the Logitech MX Keys for over a year now. Today, I'm gonna unbox the MX Keys Mini 
take a look at the differences, compare the two, and let you know what I think. So as you can see, this might be a perfect monitor for you. Don't get scared by the fact that it's six years old because it's a really intriguing offer and a really good deal for somebody that needs a basic work from home monitor. So if you enjoy what you see, remember that the likes are always free and the subs don't cost anything either. Uh, I hope you'll take a look at this monitor, link down in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.